Hey guys, Bowie here, and this is how the best pro players fight with Rubik. The first thing before we even start talking about how fighting is show you how you should look like ideally in a fight. The strength of Rubik, many people think, is that you can steal very strong spells. But another real strength is the fact that you can steal one spell prior to a fight and engage having the ability to use that spell, then steal another one. And sometimes if you engage in a fight without a stolen spell, even if you get a really good steal, it might take too long or the fight could be over before your steal actually makes a difference. Before we talk about that though, just watch how Aloha Dance would stay in areas for a long period of time when he could just, you know, push a wave, move on to do other things, jungle, but he just stands there waiting for someone to show, especially Delina, so he could pre-steal spells to join a fight with the chance of at least using two, but also, you know, getting really good spells to push waves. While you do want to start most fights with an already stolen spell, it doesn't mean you always have to do that. In this Ursa pickoff, note how he never bothered to guess which spell to steal or randomly steal Ursa. There's really only one spell that he cares about in this fight and it's Ursa's ult, so he holds on to it for a long time until Funky Fall engages and he can get the steal off. And there's more to it as well, sometimes the fact that you use spell steal can incentivize other heroes to use their spells, like RP or you know Ice Path like in this game. Watch this other fight, he TPs top, and while he has the Ursa out, several heroes he can steal stuff from, we all know what he is looking for, and it's Ice Path. It's the best spell he can get pretty much, and if we had to rate the spells that he can steal, Moonlight Shadow is up there, but note how the Murana uses Moonlight Shadow and then quickly leaps afterwards with, you know, no intentions besides the fact that he doesn't want the spell to be stolen. There's nothing imminent going on, so he chills, but the fact that he's constantly watching the fight and not his hero is what gives him the chance to never guess what to steal or when to steal it. When the Jakiro reveals itself with Ice Path, we see no hesitation. After that, he hides again. One big difference you can note from Rubik players as they are engaging a fight is how focused they are on the fight itself and the spells being cast rather than their own heroes. If we watch the last fight, I was not even aware Rubik TP'd. It felt as if hands was just watching the fight, but he TP'd and walked there while watching every single spell being used, and that's the same thing when this other fight breaks. He hides as he TPs and never hovers back to his camera. He sees Macro Pyre being used, so he combines that with his long telekinesis, allowing Quickfoot to get a kill later. We have another hand scan replay here, and it's crazy how the mind of a Rubik player works. We often have this feeling of, okay, these are the best spells to steal, but frequently things just don't work as we want them, and we steal whatever is available with fear of dying and making no impact. Rubik smokes with his team knowing that Ogre and Lina are top. Ogre is level 7 at the moment, probably has level 4 stun since he was offlaning, but for a glimpse, he realizes the last spell he used was Bloodlust, so the fact that he's constantly watching where he's going allows him to work around that. He also gets vision of the AA when he joins, but never bothers to steal any of those spells, even the stun, even when faced with the chance of dying. If Lina was dead or not visible, maybe he would get whatever was available, but since that was not the case, he steals it. And the thing about Dragon Slave opposite to Ogre Stun is that not only he gets the kill here anyways, but now he can shove ways with no care, and that's really important with this hero because he is farm dependent. Sometimes when your draft depends on a big spell to fight, like Haunt, it's okay to keep fat spells that you steal. When you watch these really good players, they're always fighting, shoving waves, so when you steal something like Chronosphere, you might be inclined to eventually give it up, but in this game, since their draft is so slow and spec will be farm after this fight, he saves it until the next fight breaks out. Radiant starts the siege, and Rubik knows that Void's Chrono is going to be ready before he is, so he's already really far back, saving the Chrono up to this point. Also demands that he doesn't get Chrono to have impact in the fight, so look how he plays. When Void engages, he can somewhat predict the Chrono cooldown by his own cooldown. He disengages, but note how he doesn't instantly use the spell, knowing it's about to be ready. There's no kill potential or easy kill since Fade Bolt is on cooldown, but as it gets ready and Nina postures like this, he uses Chronosphere. As soon as Dragon Slave gets used, meaning he can kill two people. In this game, Leo goes for a very 
rare or different build. Blink Dagger without any intermediary items. They have a lot of follow-up with Nature's Prophet, Blink on Tiny, and Blink is usually as strong as the amount of Blink Daggers or mobility you already have. Not only that, this is the type of game where he has to play very hidden and scared. You risk being engaged by a Night Stalker, a Treant, Bat Rider, so you're not gonna be able to do anything. The Blink Dagger makes sure that Liu can either disengage or engage from a safe position. Medusa also is a target that at this stage can be easily bursted with Blink, and they almost do it again in this clip. One thing to note, considering he rushed straight Blink Dagger, is his tangos in the backpack, to make sure that he can be aggressive and not have to go back to the base or crowd the courier during the game. Mystic Snake, especially in this game, is really good for Lil, because of the type of build he fell forced into, so note that while the concept I mentioned of having a skill before a fight so that you can deal more damage matters, and is important, it's not a rule setting stone. I mean, Lil could have tried to steal Void here to save the Oracle, but saving his Oracle is not worth the value of having Mystic Snake at the moment. In this game, we can see Fabi playing Rubik, and there's a bunch of great spells. One thing I didn't mention yet is that some spells are good to push waves, and other spells are great to fight. Either Shock and Fade Bolt, Fade Bolt and Dragon Slave, like we saw in the other games is really good to shove waves and propel you towards your items, but in this game, Tsukuchi is really great in low cooldown. On the other hand, Tsukuchi is really good for warding and positioning. Look how Fabi not only wards unnoticed here, but also realizes that the entire area he came from is probably not warded, and by setting up like that, he's able to predict exactly who is top trying to acquire the runes, he lures Radiant in, allowing his team to get three bounties. One of the most iconic and hard to execute plays with Rubik is this one. We have Cinderin playing Rubik, and because he was far away from the fight, he can do it perfectly. As he walks up to the fight, you can see the calculations as he secures the kill beautifully with Fade Bolt. Rubik is really, really good against Lashrak. Not only you can get a better post Nova, getting that spell is really easy. So watch how he reacts to being stunned by the Wraith King. He doesn't even bother using his stun. And you might be like, what the fuck is Cinderin doing walking up to the Lashrak like that? This is insane. Sand King will kill him. And well, before the fight started, Sand King was showing bottom, so he knew exactly Exactly, he had a head start on this one, even if he TPs. Sand King gets there just as Rubik dies, but you can clearly see how the steel allow him to deal one of the highest damages in that fight. Aghanim Scepter is a really good item on Rubik, and in this crit game, you can see it being used really well. Radiant starts Roshin, creating gauges, and note how much time he waits until his first steal. Even though he has Aghanim Scepter and his cooldown on spell steal is minimal, he understands that with Ag, some steals are really good. He also understands that Radiant will play around that steal for sure. Even when Sonic Wave gets used, he ignores it, because Chrono, Bolt, Moonlight Shadow are also really important. He couldn't steal Moonlight Shadow, but when Bolt gets used, he realizes Kanka didn't use any spells after it, and this is a great spell for a fight like this. He saves his Blink Dagger to the limit, not only positioning better to steal other spells, but wasting some of Quop's time. Eventually, Chrono gets committed, and while he steals it, he never panic uses the spell during the fight because that's a solo Kanka and a Void that doesn't really care about the spell. By holding the spell, he can make an amazing play a couple of minutes later, just watch. He never bothers to initiate or use Chrono on one target, he wants to make sure he can have an impact. Void expected Crit or another hero to be in a different place, and this allows a beautiful Chrono to be used. This is one of the few blind steals he goes for, he gets X, but regardless, the fight was won way earlier. Eventually, Void actually builds a Lincoln Sphere to deal with Crit messing with the fight. Note how Crit cannot do a thing. That being said, with Lincoln's down, Miracle can go in to wreck him. And now Crit has Time Walk available. Then he makes sure to use that to break Quop's Lincoln's, still blink, and force a BKB. In this clip, we can see Kingar playing. Dyer is diving them, and watch how he plays. He cancels the Rolling Thunder with Arrow. He then cancels it again with Telekinesis. He quickly axes the fog and uses it to get a really high duration arrow on the Razor diving the tower, while stealing the swashbuckle that Pango tries to use to find him, killing the enemy. 
Not as pretty as it could have been, but he was clearly baiting the Pango to come back with Swashbuckle so he could kill two heroes instead. In this other fight, Dyer is pushing mid while Kingar still has Swashbuckle. In this game, the really good spells to steal were Rolling Thunder, Swashbuckle, Warlock Out, Fatal Bond, so he doesn't really get hit of Swashbuckle during the fight. Not only because it's low cooldown and you can spam it and you can move, but also because it refrains Dyer from using all of those spells we talked about. Kingar knows he cannot go too far because of Night Stalker, but eventually Pango tries to engage, and one thing to notice he tries to go on the Night Stalker is that he could use Swashbuckle, still Void, to get a kill, but by being patient, Warlock is forced into a suboptimal wall that he can steal and cast before dying. And while he falls, that's an amazing fight for his team. Look how different a fight is when Rubik steals a random spell during a fight. No hesitation golem allowing Dyer to crush them despite the Slark BKB. In his other game, Jabs is playing Rubik, and as he responds, he finds a great steal on the Amber, and we can see just why this spell is so amazing to have. As Jabs approaches the fight, look again how he constantly watches the fight to know exactly which spell was cast and when. As the Kanka chases him, he uses the fog perfectly so he doesn't get axed, and after wasting Kanka's entire time, he can re-engage with the stolen spell, killing the Legion. Remnant is so good that he is yet to steal another spell, and will only do it if it's an RP or boat that gets used. Guys, thank you very much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and joining Patreon. We just got the first new 30 bucks Patreon for our league, but for it to happen, we need more people being a part of it. After we get past 10 people, it will be really hard to get games and coach everyone, so make sure to sign in now. If you only want to help, then you have the lesser tiers available to you to be a part of and still help the channel. We have a 100 Patreon goal so that I can get an editor and put out even more videos, stream more, cast, and help all of us grow together. Bye.